The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come away to a quiet place and rest for a while. In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. Well, good morning, Trinity. It is a joy and my delight to be worshiping with you this morning, especially for those who are joining us online. I am so glad that you are here and that we get to continue to connect to each other during this time of worship. I want to begin my sermon by asking you a question. When was the last time you took some time to be away? Now, mind you, I'm not talking about vacation. I'm not talking about family time. I'm not even talking about, you know, getting a quick drive getaway. I'm talking about time that you have intentionally sat down to just be. Where there was no agenda, where there's nothing that you had to do. All you simply had to do was be. When was the last time you took some time away? I suspect that you probably have not done that very often. What I would suggest is that we all need those times away. You see, I think that we live in this culture that says to us, if we are doing nothing, something must be wrong. If we are relaxing and just not being productive, it means that we must be doing something wrong because we live in a world, a culture that says that our value, ourselves, our self-worth come from our doing. Even those people who retire somehow find things that they have to do to keep productive. But what does it feel like to intentionally take some time to just be? to go to a quiet place and be in God's presence. I think in our gospel this morning gives us a little bit of a sense of what it means to go and be. In our gospel, we hear Jesus' apostles who have been sent out earlier in the gospel to go preach and teach and heal. They have now come back to be with Jesus. And I can imagine that they were all excited to tell him the stories of all the things they had done, the people they had cured, the stories they had heard. They were like kids right after Halloween, just chopped up on sugar and ready to talk to Jesus. And Jesus says to them, you look tired. You've had a busy time. Come away. Let's go find a nice place to retreat, to be, to just decompress. And as they go away to try to do that, they realize that they have a problem. The problem is that Jesus has become too popular. 
You see, Jesus had been going around the Holy Land curing the sick, um, bringing new life to those who had died. He'd been going around giving sight to the blind. He had been a one-man healthcare system running around curing all diseases and all kinds of illnesses. And you know, you know that any time that there is good news, people like to talk. So people had been talking about this man, Jesus, who cured those who had been lame and gave sight to those who had been blind and who had restored the hearing of those who had been deaf. And so his popularity continued to spread and people wanted to be around him. They wanted to be healed. And so the apostles, the disciples, the followers of Jesus had a problem because Jesus was in demand. The thing is, and wanting to take that time away, that quiet place, Jesus is interrupted by the crowd, by a crowd who demands so much from him and from his followers. They want to see and be and experience hope. They want to experience God's love, God's grace. And if we are honest with ourselves, like right now, we too are like that crowd. I love that the gospel says that they are like sheep without a shepherd, that they were just desperate to connect to Jesus, to find someone who could show them what healing and wholeness looked like. But the disciples still had a problem. They wanted to go off to be in a quiet place, to reconnect, to decompress, to be with Jesus. But notice how Jesus responds. Jesus doesn't get angry. Jesus doesn't get upset. Jesus doesn't even say to the crowd, go away. The gospel says that Jesus has compassion with them. Jesus had compassion for those who were sick and harassed and felt as though they were left out, the lost, the lowest, and the least. Our world today feels a lot like that crowd, like those people who are sheep without a shepherd, running around trying to figure out how do we find healing and wholeness and love and hope. And I think that the answer is in our gospel. I think that we all, like those disciples who had a problem, that we need those times away, those times to reconnect with ourselves, to reconnect with that deep will of spirituality, to reconnect with our God to come to this temple, to these places, our God, where we met thee. That we are in need of those times of being away, of downtime. But the thing is, even in the midst of all of that, we need, our world needs, our communities, our neighborhoods need folks who will walk in compassion with them. To walk in compassion means that we walk alongside those who are harassed and harangued. That we spend time with those who feel as though they have been left out and forgotten. It means that we must be like Jesus and be filled with the compassion to try to change the world in order to be better, not just for ourselves, but for our siblings in Christ who are in deepest need. The challenge, I think, is that most of us are busy with being busy. We can find things for art to do. We can find ways to engage ourselves, to feel as though we are being busy, to feel as though we are connected. But the reality is we all need that time where someone offers us compassion, a quiet, a stopping of things, a slowing down in our lives to remind us not just who we are, but whose we are. That we are made for and called for from a God who stopped on the Sabbath day to rest. And I am convinced that if God can stop to rest, it means that we need to do the same. Because the last time I checked, none of us are God. We might think we are sometimes, but... The divine is the one who is ultimately in charge, and we too need those times, those places, where we can stop and ask and be in the presence of God. 
one of the guilty pleasures that I have is I love to watch this British show called Keeping Up Appearances. Is with this lady who her name is Hyacinth Bucket, but she pronounces her name, she's Hyacinth Bouquet. And Hyacinth is a little busybody. She's always trying to make herself and make things seem so much bigger and grander and more royal and regal than it really is. She tries to keep up the appearance that she is a very well-to-do lady. And her husband is always dragged along for the adventure. A simple outing to the seaside turns in to a grand production. But at the heart of Hyacinth Bouquet is a woman who is trying her hardest just to keep things going. And the best thing that Hyacinth could do that she often finds is to just stop and be where she is. The question for us, like the disciples that follow Jesus, is are we able to stop keeping up our appearances in order to take time to refresh our bodies, our minds, and our souls? Are we able to step away and find those places of compassion where we can not just be the givers of compassion, working for the poor and those who have been pushed to the side, but the receivers of Christ's compassion? Can we allow others to walk with us? Are we able to stop from all of our doing, the busy work that we find ourselves doing, and come away to a quiet place and rest for a while? I can say one of the gifts of this time of pandemic has been that we have been forced to think about what matters most to us in our lives and in our communities. It has been an intentional, global, slowing down, a coming away to a quiet place. My fear as we come out of this time of pandemic is that we will lose sight of the things that we have gained in recognizing what's most important in our lives. It is not the busyness. It is not the things that we have to do. It is not the work we must engage in. It is the things that are most important that we value. You see, no one at the end of their life says, you know, I wish I had gone to work more. I wish I'd spent more time in the office. I wish I'd spent more time, you know, behind a desk or out doing the work that I need to do. At the end of most of our lives, we say, we wish we had more time with our family. We had more time to travel to engage with life. The question is, why do we wait until we come near to the end of our days to decide that spending time with the ones that we love and engaging in those things that recreate not just our bodies, but our souls are the important things in our lives? Jesus had a problem that he was so busy, and yet, and yet even in his busyness, he found time to step away, to find a moment or two of quiet, to center himself, to go back out in compassion with those who needed him the most. The last time I checked, you were not Jesus, and I certainly am not. And yet, if Jesus needed that time to reconnect with the divine source, it means that we need that time as well. My question for you as we gather this morning is the same that I started. When was the last time you took some time to just be? To be in quiet, to connect with the one who calls you by name, who knows that you are beloved and says to you in no uncertain terms, come away to a, for a, to a quiet place and rest for a while so that you may go out into the world to be Christ's compassion. My sisters and brothers, we need that time away. My siblings in Christ, we need to be about the busyness of simply being, so that we can go out into the world, a world that is in desperate need, and be Christ's compassion. May you take the time to reconnect to the divine source. 
May you take the time to come away to a quiet place and rest for a while. May you heed Jesus' invitation to offer compassion to those who need it the most. And may God bless you. May God keep you. And may you always hear the voice of the one saying to you, come away to a quiet place and rest for a while. Amen. Mm -hmm.